Hello, big team. Hello, friends. Welcome to Lizzie Vanoff's Books. I'm Elizabeth, and today I've got a book haul for you. It feels like it's too late to call it a fall book haul, although that's really what it is. The majority of these books are the rest of what I acquired over the fall, and since fall technically didn't end until about December 21st, and that was less than a month ago, it's really not that long since since it was fall. But I don't know, it just feels weird to call it fall. And I don't even want to say it's the last book haul of 2021 because I'm still not going to show you the books that I bought to sell. Those will be in an eBay video whenever I get around to um, doing another video about what I'm doing with our eBay business, if you even want to call it a business. Right now, I, I'm still at the hobby level, but uh, I did purchase several books at the big, huge Gainesville, Florida library book sale back in the fall or summer, end of summer, early fall. I don't know. It's been a few months now. I can't even remember when it, when it was, but I will show you those in a separate video. And I already showed you the miscellaneous stuff that I got there, and what I didn't show you from there is is the romances. So I've got those for today. I have a box of books my sister sent me and I have some Christian fiction because I feel like I didn't do a separate Christian fiction book haul for the fall. I did one in the summer but I was looking at this box and I pulled out one that I I know I've shown you before. So it's very possible that you have seen a couple of these before but Honestly, I think if I don't remember, you probably don't either. <laughs> so I'm just going to show them. I'm going to show what's in this box. There's a few middle grade books. And I did a whole three-hour live stream where I showed the Cozy Mysteries that I had gotten in the fall and at the Gainesville sale and everything. And I still found about six more that I don't think I showed in that big three-hour haul. And the reason it was three hours because we were live stream. We were chatting. I had some of my Cozy Mystery friends on there with me. And it was a lot of fun. But um, I'm just trying to kind of make this a catch-all video. So let me start first with a bookish t-shirt that I got for Christmas. My mother-in-law gave me this one. I feel like she gave me two bookish shirts. And I can't remember what the other one is. And... My closet is such a mess, but this one I've already worn in a video, so uh, I don't know if you could read it from the video, but it says my retirement plan is stacking up nicely, and for those of you that don't know, I retired at the beginning of 2021 uh, after a 30 plus year career at Walt Disney World. Um, I was a performer. And that's as much as I can say about that. But uh, I am happy to be retired. I still have, you know, a lot of my same benefits. I just don't have to go to work every day. Although I miss it. I can't say that I don't because I actually do miss it a lot. And I am so out of shape now. Even worse than I was <laughs> the last couple of years that I worked. So... That's going to be one of my goals for um, this year is to get in better shape. It, I shouldn't say going to be. It is. It is a goal. But let's get back to a goals video coming soon. Let's do this. So a few of these I know I've shown in other videos for various things. Um, this is Stranger Dream by Jack Castle. I received this in the mail just a month or two ago. Uh, I was a copy editor of this. So my name is in the acknowledgments. And that's so exciting. Um, I think I showed this in one of my wrap-up videos, but anyway, uh, that is the final book in the Stranger World series by Jack Castle. And let me start with what I got for Christmas, because I didn't get a huge amount of books for Christmas, although I got some uh, that I'm really excited about. I've already read them, but I'm excited to have them. My mother-in-law gave me Prairie Fires, nice hardcover edition. It's by Caroline Fraser. And uh, I listened to this on audio. This is a really good book. Very in-depth look at the life of Lauren Gilles Wilder and her family. So I'm ex really excited to have this. She also gave me a DVD. And it's almost within my reach. But let me get it. She also gave me this DVD of the Lauren Gilles Wilder PBS special. It's called Prairie to Page. I watched this online. And I'm super happy to have the DVD. Um... <laughs> In the same stack, a couple of DVDs I got myself for Christmas at the library in the sale area. Uh, Star Trek, I love Chris Pine and Zachary Quinto. In fact, I had a huge crush on Zachary Quinto when uh, 
when Heroes was on TV. Um, I, I know I'm way older than him, but I loved I loved watching him as the evil uh, Siler. Uh, Santa Claus 2 is my favorite of the three Santa Claus movies, and I found this at the library and decided to grab that as well. So then, my husband ordered online for me the Fanny Flag Whistle Stop Cookbook. I've already read it and done a review of it, and I am so glad he got this for me because I would really love to cook some more things from this cookbook. So that makes me very happy. Uh, this was my Library Book Club White Elephant Book Gift. Uh, we do a White Elephant Gift Exchange. It has to be a book, and you know it can be a used book or whatever. Um, and we wrap it and write clues on it so that when it's your turn to pick a book, you can read the clues on the different uh, book packages and pick the one that sounds most appealing to you. So I got A Borrowing of Bones by Paula Meunier, maybe? Uh, it says local author, but that's not local to me. This was brought in by someone who has moved to Florida from somewhere else, so I'm not sure where, but it says it's a mystery. It's got a blurb um, from Lisa Gardner on it, who I have not read, but I've seen. It's got a blurb uh, from Lee Child. So anyway, uh, I'm curious about it, and that's uh, that's what I got. Then a kind of another gift to myself. I've already shown this as well. Um, I found this at a used bookstore in Tampa, the Illustrated Lark Rise to Candleford by Florida Thompson, Flora Thompson. I read this in June for Pastoral June. This is a gorgeous edition. I still want to find the entire series. Like uh, I think it comes in a bind up of all three full length, but uh, I'm excited to have that. That's the only thing that my library has is this illustrated edition, and I um, I think it's beautiful. So let me go now to let me set these over here. All right, so I also got a box of books from my sister, but I'll save it for a little bit, and I'll show you the cozy mysteries that I don't think I showed you in the big book haul. Incidentally, if you didn't see that um, live stream book haul, it is on my channel. It um, Something happened, and I had to take it down for a little while. I, I, I don't even need to go into it, but if you looked for it, after the fact and couldn't find it. It is back up now. I just had to edit out something. So, um, and not anything that, um, you know, it, it wasn't a, any, any of the books. You can still watch it and see all the books that I got. Uh, I have two books from the Booktown Mystery Series. I think books four and five. Uh, book four is Chapter and Hearse. And I have most of these now. I need to get started on the series. Sentenced to Death. I may have another one of these. I don't know. I'm kind of behind on cataloging. So, um, since I'm selling on eBay now and I kind of want to have a lot of cozy mysteries in my inventory, I don't mind if I pick up duplicates because I'll just put them in my eBay inventory. Thread on Arrival, an embroidery mystery by Amanda Lee. Uh, another series I have not started reading. This is book five. And then I have read a few of these, not in order. This is book 12 in the Lucy Stone Mysteries by Leslie Meyer, New Year's Eve Murder. This series has been around a while. This, I think, is one of the earlier cozy mysteries that was a cozy mystery before that phrase was even really coined. Uh, I think I have another one of these, uh, The Emergency Dessert Squad Mysteries by Laura Bradford. This is book two, The Silence of the Flans, or Flans. And I have heard Tiffany from the Beach Bum Bookworm rave about these, and I'm excited to, um, to get to those one of these days. And then this is book two in the Southern Ladies Mysteries, uh, Dead with the Wind by Miranda James. This is a spinoff series of The Cat and the Sex, which I'm caught up with now. So I can, um, I can read those at some point, hopefully soon, but probably not this year because those are not on my, on my list. <laughs> I have, if you haven't seen my, um, Serious About Series, TBR, I just uploaded that, um, this morning. This is still Saturday. I don't know if I'm going to upload this on Saturday or maybe save it for Sunday since I've already uploaded a video this morning. But uh, anyway, it's the video right before this one and you will see all the series or at least a lot of the series that I am currently reading and planning to focus on in uh, 2022. So the middle grade books, let's go to those next. Um, I have several. I have an audio book that I found at the Tampa Public Library uh, for sale, Things That Are by Andrew Clements. This is the third book in a trilogy, 
and I've read only book two. So I've, uh, I have all three now and I want to go back and start with book one, maybe reread book two and then go on to book three. And I did put that series on my serious about series list. I have one book. I don't know if this is, this looks like a children's book, but I think this is really more for adults. Everything I need to know, I learned from a Disney little golden book. I think there's a few of these. There's another one that's just everything I need to know I learned from a golden book. Um, this was in great shape when I bought it, but look, we have a a young cat, a kitten, who has almost fully grown now, but he likes to find edges of things and chew on them. So, <sighs> he's kind of got a hold of that. And this one I bought... At the same bookstore that I got the uh, Lark Rise to Candleford. This is book six of The Land of Stories by Chris Colfer, Worlds Collide. I always think of George Costanza when I think of the term Worlds Colliding. Uh, I picked this up somewhere, Hello Universe by Aaron and Trotta Kelly. This is a Newberry winner, one of the more recent ones, and I haven't read it. I can't find it on audio anywhere uh, unless I buy it on Audible. And so I just went ahead and grabbed a copy. I found it somewhere used bookstore maybe or not it looks brand new so I do need to get that one read um this one I think I got free outside the bookstore where I got the um the land of stories and the uh Lark Rise to Candleford I I don't think I ever showed that vlog I did some vlogging where I did some book shopping and I went to some little free libraries and I I was waiting on Katie one day and I I need to put all this random footage together and just get it uploaded but I was um, I wanted to go around and see some little free libraries because I had just downloaded the fairly new app where uh, and if you don't know about it download the little free library app because it has a much better map than it used to uh, you used to have to just go to the website, and then it was hard, you know, take forever to load. So they have an app now where you can find the registered Little Free Libraries in whatever area that you're in. And I, while I was waiting on her, she was taking a test, and I had just kind of gone along with her to Tampa. Uh, I didn't have any books to trade. And so I stopped by this used bookstore where I found those other two books, and out front were some bins of free books. I found some great books in there, and I ended up putting several of them in the little free libraries that I visited. I brought a few home, um, and I, I kept a couple. So this one I don't know anything about, but I recognize this author because Tanya Lloyd Kai. Anyway, this is Maya's Strategy to Save the World, and... Um, I don't know anything about it, but I would give it a try. And then I've got a couple of other older books that I think I have found in Little Free Libraries. Actually, this one might have come from library book sale. I'm not sure. But anyway, The House of Sixty Fathers is by Minder De Jong. He wrote uh, a Newbery winner from the 50s. 50s that I read uh, just a few months ago. And of course, the title escapes me <laughs> right now. Uh, if I think about it, I'll put a picture of the one I've already read up there. It was delightful. I just remember loving it. And so I found this somewhere and it's in beautiful condition. And I thought, well, if I loved that book, I might love this one as well. And it also is a Newberry, probably an honor book, I think. Um, so hard to, yeah, so hard to see these because uh, it's it's not an actual sticker because it's a newer edition. Um, oh, cats are fighting. Um, anyway, it's a Newberry Honor Book. Then I found this in a little free library right before Christmas, and I felt like I had to save it because we were at a festival in a couple towns over, and there's a little free library there in their park. And I don't know if it had just happened recently or not, but the door was gone off the little free library. And, you know, it rains pretty frequently here. Not so much in December, but still, there were still some books in there, and so far they were in good shape. And I, I found this one. This is Miss Hickory by Carolyn Sherwin Bailey, and it is a Newberry winner from the 20s or 30s. 30s, I think. And uh, I didn't have a copy, and I need to read this one. So I figured, why not go ahead and grab it? 1946. So it'll be the 1947 Newberry winner. Not very long, and I was happy to have it. Uh, this one is a Newberry winner, I think, from the 30s. And I have heard not so good things about this one. Um, I'm trying to see. 
no, this one's, well, no, those are just reprints. I can't, I'm trying to find when it was originally, it could be from the 50s, but I don't think so. I think this is earlier. Anyway, The Cat Who Went to Heaven by Elizabeth Coatsworth. Again, not very long at all, so I'm happy to have it because it's one that I haven't read and need to read this year. All right, so that's all the middle grade books. Um, let me, I have a couple of other random things, and then a handful of Christian fiction, a bunch of romance, and then what my sister got me. So um, this I've read before. I need to take the sticker off, but um, this is the second or third book in the... Um, Cemetery of Forgotten Books. I buddy read this with Elizabeth Tyree. This is the uh, just the Angels Game, yes, and it's such a beautiful book. I think this is book two. It's terrible. I can't remember. There's only four books, so I can't even remember uh, which is which. But um, anyway, it look at this. It's got kind of a like a partial cover so that the books peek out. Um, it's interesting how that's done. But anyway. I'm excited to have my own copy of it. And then this I found, that same day that I picked up that uh, Miss Hickory from the Little Free Library, we went to like three different outdoor, indoor, well, one was indoor, two were outdoor, different festivals, Christmas, marketplace kind of things, uh, all in the same town. And at the very last one, there was like a traveling bookseller there. And this I ended up paying a little more for than I normally would, but it looked very interesting and I just wanted to support that type of business. So this is Seinfeldia. <laughs> so now this is the second second mention of Seinfeld in this video. Um, I did really enjoy the Seinfeld show. It's by Jennifer Gieschen Armstrong, How a Show About Nothing Changed Everything. And it's a nonfiction book just about the phenomenon of Seinfeld and um, yeah I'm excited about it there's a, a handful of full color pictures in it so yeah I'm excited and it came with a bonus bookmark straight line oh see and read oh how fun that's awesome can y'all see that where you just lay it on your book and then you can see the line I love that um, then this actually was in our little free library. I don't know if you guys remember, but earlier in 2021, February to April, I read the Bible in 90 days. Well, this is an edition of the Bible from, um, First Baptist Church of the Mall in Lakeland, and it is called The Journey of a Lifetime, The Bible in 90 Days. Now, the, um, cover is a bit worn. You can kind of tell that somebody probably really did use this to read the Bible in 90 days. But it is an edition that is, uh, I guess, I'm guessing that the reading guide, yeah, there's a reading guide in here. And um, it's the, oh, it's the NIV version, New International, which is not my favorite edition. But um, anyway, uh, I just saw it, it it's kind of banged up and so we were going to take it out anyway and I was like oh let me keep that because I might want to do that again sometime um our pastor who uh, was our interim pastor for a little while who introduced this 90-day challenge to our church formerly had been the pastor of this church which put out this edition of the bible so um that's that's the connection and that's pretty awesome so then, um, let me lead on into Christian fiction with, uh, you know, that being said, some of these I may have shown you already. Uh, I apologize if I have. Um, this is the first book in the Westward Dreams series by Jane Peart, I believe, Runaway Heart. My mom used to read books by her, and so when I see them, I pick them up. I haven't read one in a long time. If if ever, really, but I just recognize the author's name. This is some short stories, three historical novels uh, set in New Mexico by Janet Lee Barton. I think this is published by Barber. Yeah, I, I have collected quite a few Barber books. The Sweet Smell of Magnolias and Memories by Celeste Fletcher McHale. This one I may have shown you before, or maybe I showed it in a video when I bought it, and I don't know if that but it has been uploaded anywhere or not. Uh, this is published by Thomas Nelson Publishers, so that says to me it is a faith-based book. Uh, this is, I believe, book two in a trilogy by 
Shelly Shepard Gray. It's Return to Sugar Creek, and it's called Thankful. I haven't read uh, anything by Shelly Shepard Gray in a while. I believe I did read a series by her a couple of years ago in April, but um, it's been a while. And then since then, I've been collecting some of her books, but need to get back to uh, books by her. I have read a lot of Lori Copeland books. This is a standalone, When Love Comes My Way. Don't know anything about it. And Return to the Heartland by June Masters Bacher. This is another author that my mom used to read. This is book four in the Heartland Heritage series. And this, um, let me do this one first. Uh, Sis the Sister Chick series by Robin Jones Gunn. This is Sister Chicks Say Ooh La La. It is book five in the Sister Chick series. And I have not read any of those yet. And this one I'm kind of excited about because my sister sent me one in the same series. This is The Amish Nanny by Mindy Starnes Clark and Leslie Gould. It's from the Women of Lancaster County series. It's an uh, Amish book. So let me just, uh, I was going to save my sister's stuff till the end, but um, let me just go ahead and move on into that right now. So here's the box. I don't want to show you addresses, but anyway. There's the box, and it's almost full. Here is uh, Debbie Maycumber, My Hero. I, I may have a copy of that. I'm not sure, but still, it's great. Uh, this I do have. Uh, she has been <laughs> reminding me to read this series in a, for a long time. I do have this already, but this is just another reminder from her that I need to uh, read some more. It is on my SAS list for this year, my Serious About Series list. Deadly Notions by Elizabeth Lynn Casey. I'm not sure what number this is. Um... But anyway, that's from the Southern Sewing Circle Mysteries. Elizabeth Lynn Casey also is Laura Bradford. Uh, Huckleberry Summer by Jennifer Beckstrand. I have been eyeballing this series for a while, and I haven't read any of them. Uh, another Amish series. Okay, so here is the, uh, the book she sent me from the Women of Lancaster County. This is the Amish Quilter. Mindy Starnes Clark and Leslie Gould. I don't know the number. I should have looked up the number of that. I don't know. Um... And I think I have another book from this series as well. I hope it's not um, either one of these. And I don't know anything about the series or how many there are or anything. Um, this one, I need to look at the little notes and see what she said. She wrote little notes about uh, some of these. Oh, <laughs> this one is called Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. She says uh, that uh, Then She Was Gone is okay. <laughs> so... Not a glowing recommendation. This one, she was just returning back to me. Where Love Dwells by Delia Parr is book three in the Candlewood trilogy. Because I had sent it to her so she could read it. And I said, you know, don't get rid of it because this is my copy. You know, if you if you are going to get rid of it, send it back to me. Uh, Material Witness by Vanetta Chapman is book three in the Shipshawana Amish Cozy Mystery series. She has sent me all of these now. And I did put this series, a trilogy, on my Serious About series list for this year to make sure that I um, finish it this year. This one looks fun. Uh, let's see what she said about it. A Mother's Gift, she says, is very good by Charlotte Hubbard. I love that cover. That is really nice. It's a beautiful cover. And then this one, The Sewing Machine by Natalie Fergie. I've never heard of this. She says it gets better at the end. <laughs> so stick with it. Hang in there. She didn't say that. I said that. Uh, then this last one, I'm trying to see what she wrote. Um, okay. <laughs> How to Find Love in a Bookshop by Veronica Henry. She says, How to Find Love in a Bookshop is just okay, but I couldn't resist sending it to you because, you know, bookshop and everything because I'm so bookish. So that's very cute. Uh, thank you, Sharla, so much for these awesome books. I'm excited to get to them. And um, that's awesome. So the rest of these are going to be mostly all um, category romance. Um, most of the category romances even are uh, the canine unit series, different series. So if you're not interested in that, thank you so much for watching. Um, I will see you in the next video. But if you want to go ahead and see these, uh, before I get to the canine ones, I have quite a few by Betty Neal's. I started grabbing a couple as I would see them because I keep hearing good things about her and I think I would really enjoy her writing. 
But now I've gotten such a collection that I'm thinking, I looked on my library website and they've got plenty of Betty Neal's books. And I'm thinking maybe I will just go ahead and um, list these on eBay because I just have too many books. Uh, but anyway, here's what I got. If you've heard of any of these or read any of these and I should definitely keep it and read it, let me know. So this one looks like a Christmas one, Dearest Betty Jane. No, Mary Jane. I'm oh, sorry, Betty Neal's Mary Jane. Uh, this one is called Polly. All Else Confusion. That's an old one. A Secret Infatuation. And A Kiss for Julie. Now, other than these, I've got maybe two or three others by Betty Neal's. And so I could just lot these up and list these on eBay. And I, I can't decide if I want to or not. Now, I have another copy of this one. Oh, I actually have two of the copies of this one. Because look, oh my goodness, this is funny. Um, look what I say. My sister sent me this one, but look at that. <laughs> Here's the vintage version. My Hero by Debbie Makenburg. Um, I wonder what year this came out. It looks like 1992. Uh, if you haven't heard yet, Storm from Storm Reads is going to be hosting a retro romance readathon for the month of February. So I think I am going to try to read or maybe listen to some of my, um, Debbie Maycumber books, maybe some of the older classic ones that I can get on audio. So I'm excited about that. I picked this up to put in the Little Fear Library for Christmas, and somehow it didn't make it there. <laughs> maybe because I, w I really do want to read this author. It's Marta Perry. I think I did show this with my Christmas books, The Doctor's Christmas. Uh, I picked this up at a used bookstore in Tampa that same day when I was waiting on Katie. Okay, now I did go through all these military canine books, and... Um, I had them in some kind of order, but I may have gotten them mixed up. But anyway, let me just show you. <laughs> That's, there they are. Uh, actually, not all of them are, are canine. I have a few Amish ones. So let me show you those first. Undercover Memories by Lenora Worth. Oh, actually, I've this one I've had a while. I think I just was putting them together. Amish Hideout by Maggie K. Black. I've had that one for a while. Um... A couple more by Allison Stone, Plain Sanctuary, and Plain Jeopardy. I've got at least two others in the series, and I will, um, I think I finally did find the first one back in September when I was on my trip, and um, when I went back to Oklahoma and Texas, I found the first one at a used bookstore. So I can get started on the series, but I don't know if I will or not. So, let's see. One of these... Uh, okay, let me just say. There's the Classified Canine Unit, the True Blue Canine Unit, and the Rookie Canine Unit. Now, I read and finished the Military Canine Unit series, and I loved it so much. That's what made me interested to pick up some of these other uh, canine series. So, I looked up, and one of them, one of the series, is on Hoopla, and the other two are not. And I can't tell you right now which one is. I'm trying to get these sorted out because I had separated the Christmas ones um, out separately. Let me get everything turned around. All right. Um, hold on one second. Let me just pause it and get this straightened out. Okay, I think I've got them all sorted out now. So I have this one, Canine Unit Trained to Rescue. It is a bind-up of two stories. It says that one of them is book three in the Canine Mountain Guardians series, and I don't know anything about that. I don't have any more of that series, and it's called Fugitive Trail by Elizabeth Goddard. And then Into Thin Air is a standalone, and they are both like search and rescue canine stories. So that looks good. Then I'm still missing several, but, you know, I just grabbed all the ones that I could find when I was at the big Gainesville sale. So this series is the Rookie Canine Unit series. Um, these were published in 2016, and uh, I have number four, Honor and Defend by Lynette Eason, and then number five, Secrets and Lies by Shirley McCoy. Search and Rescue by Valerie Hansen is number six. 
And these uh, authors all contributed to the Military Canine Unit series. So, um, you know, I loved all of those. And so I'm, I feel very confident that I'm going to enjoy these. And then book nine is a bind up of two Christmas novellas. Valerie Hansen and Lenore Worth are the authors. It's called Rookie Canine Christmas. The two stories are Surviving Christmas and Holiday High Alert. So that's all I have of the Rookie Canine Unit series. Then I have a few of the Classified Unit series. These came out in 2016. Um, book one I have, that's good, Guardian by Terry Reed. Book three, Special Agent by Valerie Hansen. Book five, Bodyguard by Shirley McCoy. And then book nine, Lenora Worth and Terry Reed wrote the Christmas novellas for that series called A Killer Christmas and Yuletide Stalkings. And that is the classified canine unit Christmas. Then I have the True Blue canine unit series. I've got more of those than any of the others. Um... These were published in 2019. Book one is Justice Mission by Lynette Eason. Book three is Blind Trust. It's by Laura Scott. I actually picked up a duplicate of it, so um, that'll either get donated somewhere or go in my eBay store. Maybe I'll just hang on to it. I dropped one. Maybe I'll just hang on to it for a little while, and if I run across run across other duplicates, then I can always list those on eBay. Uh, this is number four, Deep Undercover by Lenora Worth. And aren't the dogs on? The pictures of the dogs are just amazing. Uh, number six, Trail of Danger by Valerie Hansen. Number seven is Courage Under Fire by Sharon Dunn. That looks like the globe in front of Universal Studios. I wonder where these take place. I don't know. I'm sure there's other globes in the world <laughs> like that. Uh, and then the True Blue Canine Unit Christmas is authored by Laura Scott and Maggie K. Black. The stories are Holiday Emergency and Crime Scene Christmas. And then the one I dropped, let me get it. This is from a series that uh, I didn't even know about from 2020. This is True Blue Canine Unit Brooklyn. And I just have the one, and it's book one. Copycat Killer by Laura Scott. So that is it. Uh, if I find anything else, I'll just tack it on to the end of this. But as of right now, I think that's everything that I want to show you in this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you stuck by till the end, just uh, give me a heart for romance books. And uh, be sure to check out Storm Reads channel, Stormy from Storm Reads, and her retro romance readathon for February. I'll put a link to her channel and her announcement video in the description. So for now, that's all for, um, for, I mean, that's, that's my book all. <laughs> and, uh, I hope to come back soon for another video. And if you've missed any of my recent videos, I hope that you will check those out and I hope you're having a great day. Read a good book and God bless you. P.S. I knew I was going to forget something. Uh, I got a book cart for Christmas. Katie got me this and uh, I'm really excited. I had been just kind of toying with the idea of getting one, and so I'm really excited about it. As of right now, right beside me on either side are some bins full of books with potential eBay inventory, and then on top of that, I stack my books that I want to talk about in a video. So I would like to move at least one side or the other of these bins that are eBay inventory out to the garage with the other eBay inventory, and then I can put my cart up so that I will have the books that I want to talk about in my videos on the cart. And then I can roll it around if I need to, and I don't have to, you know, constantly be carrying books back and forth from here and my staging shelf. In fact, I might even use my current staging shelf for something else and keep my um, current TBR on the cart, which is what a lot of people do. So that is it. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you soon.